So let's say you work with 2D geometry and you would like to return a, a point, right? A, an X and Y coordinate, but you can't because, well, variables or these base variables only hold uh, just one of them, right? You could arguably serialize them and then send them as a string and whatnot, but there are much, much better ways to do this in, in C. Today we'll tackle how to define your own type in C. Simple enough, it's not gonna take long, don't worry. So to start off, there's a keyword that says, okay, from here on out, I want to define a type. A type, whatever that is, it's just going to be something that can hold multiple variables at once, right? And that keyword is simply struct. From then on, you can write your data type's name, however you want to call it. Let's call this one just point, simple and straightforward. It's a point and it's going to hold two coordinates. So after we've typed the name, open and close brackets and a semicolon at the end. And in between the brackets, there's no code here. So no, no E for for loop or nothing. You cannot really write code here. All you can do is simply declare variables, okay? And we need to think, well, what do we want? We really want just two variables, right? An X and an o a Y. And those should be, let's say, of type double, right? So then what we have to do is simply declare them like in any other place in the code. So say double X and double Y. You can also simply say double X comma Y. Same thing, same exact thing. I just want to be more explicit here. Okay, so that's, this is the basic way of declaring a struct. Now, how to use it? Well, that's also very simple. All you have to do is say struct point, let's say P, and to initialize its values, you can simply do P dot X equals, let's say 0 0.25 and P dot Y equals 0 0.78 for example, right? And then we can, let's say, let's print this on the screen real fast. All right, and if we try to run this, you will notice that we get both the numbers that were in this variable. So simple enough, simply say p dot whatever variable you've declared here equals, well, whatever you want. Now, there's one really annoying thing when doing this. Why do you have to say struct point P every time. What if we simply remove this struct? Is it gonna build? No, that doesn't work. So do we have to type struct every time? Not really, not really, not so fast. You can actually bypass this restriction by simply saying the following at the declaration. So you have to add two words here. Uh, one is type def, which I've covered in another video that you can check out up top. And then you simply have to copy and paste the name of the data type that you've defined here. So now you can both use struct point. So if I try to compile this, it's going to compile successfully, but you can also use simply point without actually compiling and it's going to work the same way, right? So simply use type def and then point. It's it's a pretty nice sort of trick. One more thing before you go, I wanna show you a simple way you can initialize this point better than just simply saying p dot x equals whatnot. So first let's comment this initialization part and then try to initialize it on the go like we do with any other really variable, right? We, we can say something like int x equals five and that would work because it's going to both it's going to both declare it and initialize it, right? And we can do the same here. We can both declare it and initialize it on the same line, like so. Equals open and close brackets, and in between the brackets we have to say p the variable that we are instantiating here p dot x this x from here equals 0 0.25 and for y you can say 
comma p dot y equals 0 0.78 and if we try to compile this and run it you will notice that we get the same result right so this is this is marginally better right you kind of know that these lines are related to this point right so that's really nice to see now the cool thing about this is you can simply drop the variable so that you don't have to repeat yourself like so and it will still work if we try to run this you'll notice that we get the same result so i think that's that's really cool i think for this advantage for simply being able to not write uh, the variable's name which might be much larger in larger projects is a pretty big advantage so this is how you can create your own data type and initialize it and use it i hope this was useful to you and thanks for watching see you next time